Well, we, hey, we're a quorum. Oh, no, we're not. I'm sorry, Lois. We I, will. Can't, I can't, I can't count. I don't count. You don't no. count? Of course you count. Not yet. <laughs> you count one, two, three, right? <laughs> not for, yeah, you guys, one, two, three. Not for a quorum. Yeah, yeah. By next time, I, I understand it's going to be next week that select board will, will do that. Well, they nominate then it's like a week or so later they appoint. So it's like a two step process, I think. Okay, okay. It'll, it'll happen within the next month. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry for the delay. It, uh, it Life happens. Done by now, yeah. Oh, boy. Have people seen the um, pollinator garden tour that's this month um, through the um, Massachusetts Pollinator Network? No. Oh, no, I haven't seen that. Yeah. Um, th the first one is this uh, Thursday, four to six at uh, Lincoln Station. Oh. Oh. Huh. oh. I can forward the tour. Yeah, yeah. And the last is like the 23rd, and that's um, three places in Southboro. Okay. Oh, good. So that would be probably Freddie's Research Garden, mm -hmm. as other things. And the library and another, and, it, and the, the town park. Yeah. I got over. But the second is Littleton, and there's two in Littleton and in Chelmsford. Yep. Cool. And Steve Vero gave a nice tour of his farm um, to the Lincoln Land Trust people. Nice. Uh, this this was last week. All right. Cool. I, I talked with Janet like I, let me think, two hours ago and said, I'll see you tonight. She said, yes. Yeah, so. Well, well, wait, you have guys have a, um, is it the town clerk that you see for the, um, what is it, the um, open meeting regulations and some kind of training or something for that for committee members. Oh, I haven't yes. had any they, training. They send you a whole bunch of stuff. They'll, you'll they get don't. an email about the training. Yeah. Okay. And they never send to... me anything, so. What, you didn't get the training? Nope, never got anything. Oh, I got an email with the link to the training and I had to sign off that I had done it before I could hand yeah. in my paperwork. Didn't know it. Well, maybe I don't know. Maybe I did and didn't realize it. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> yeah. it's hard. It's hard to miss that you've done this training because it's long and tedious. Well, I was working <laughs> it was long and tedious at the time, so it would be hard to distinguish. <laughs> <laughs> no, I figured I, I I should get that done too before the next meeting. So that mm -hmm. yeah. well, I, I think you have to. Technically, you're supposed to do it before you can be officially on the committee. Well, maybe that's why that's that week. There's a you know a, a lag between a Hi, Janet. nomination. Hi, <clears throat> okay. a little no, trouble finding there, the there's, link. There's another lag after you get your approval letter and then until you sign your piece of paper. Bless you. Let's see. Well, we're a quorum. Let's start. What do you say? Yep. I had I had two announcements I wanted to make at some point when you're if when it's, it's new good business time. or old business, but let's do minutes first. Yes. Let's do minutes so first. I guess it's new. Okay, hang on to it. So I I looked at the minutes and I thought they were great. I had only one question and who is Brian? And I, I know I should know his last name. Right, so I had, originally I had a, um, in, in the word version, I had a question mark saying last name, but oh no, yeah, I never heard back. And so I just finalized them. 
Okay. Is it windmill? It's windmiller, isn't it? I don't, we don't know. I don't know. I think you're right, Janet. I think it is. And it's B R Y A N, I believe. Uh, I can, um, I mean, I can quickly fix it. Yeah. Um, I'll see. look that up to be sure, but I, I check I it. That's I, his name. But I think you're right. I, I seem to recall he's very big on the Blanding's turtle, I think. Yep. And he's done work over at, when you said pollinator garden at the treatment plant, boy, that's his part of the town. That's for sure. Right in there. Yeah, that's it. So B-R-Y-A-N and what's his last name? Windmiller. W, well, like W-I-N-D-M-I-L-L-E-R. Okay. Good. All right. And then let me just save this as a PDF. Okay. Before I forget. I move that we accept the minutes. Okay. Me too. I second that. Yeah, I'll third it. Favor? <laughs> Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. With that, with that, let's see. Now it's time to pull up the agenda. This is old business time. Oh, come on, Marcus. You can do this. Oh, there you go. Good, good. Okay, so uh, updates to our website is one thing that's hanging on there. Um, so did you get a get a, a template or speak with the web webmaster? I well, you know what it is. I I tried to uh, go back to that discussion I'd had a long time ago and remember who I had talked to, and I failed. But I did remember that they said look at the the uh, CSEC website, which I did, and then I looked at our website and. Uh, and I also went over and looked at the website of the Native Pollinator Task Force at Sudbury Valley. Um, I have not looked at the Southboro one. I meant to do that and I didn't. Well, but, I think the big thing is what can we do with the town website? Yeah, and I think we not can, not what what you know what what I mean. We need to know how they'll let us organize it, and then we can organize and look at others. Well, she. When I did speak to this person, and I th think it was Aaron, but I'd have to go back and look because it was a while, it was some time ago now. They said that the person said that they like the organization of the CSEC website, and ours is kind of done the same way. We're on the left Wh side. Which one is it? C? CSEC, uh, Conquer Sustainable Energy Committee. Um, ours is actually, if you look at ours, it's organized the same way, but we don't have as much stuff. Uh, and actually, on the CSEC stuff, they need to do some updating. But anyway, that's a separate issue. Uh, but um, actually, let me, I'll, I'll pull up ours. Uh, I think I've got oh, ours. Oh, pull up theirs, because that's what we have to match what they do. That's, that's, we know what we don't have. OK, let me see if I can find what they have. Mark, while you're doing that, um, was it you who moved to, ex who moved to accept the minutes and Isabel seconded? I've already forgotten in that. It doesn't matter. I think I think Isabel moved. And okay. I, yeah. Got it. Okay. Now let's see. Um. All right. Okay. Um. um, 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 um I'll. Uh, okay. Let me share screen here. Okay. So there's this. This is the thing. So here's, this is our website. And see, we have information on pollinators there and neonicotinoid research. You, is that coming through okay? Yeah. Yep. Well, so our information on pollinators is pretty thin, <laughs> right? So well, that's something we can flesh out with, web, with uh, PDF files. And nicotinoid research is kind of, it's good, but it's out of date. It needs to be updated. Uh, and now let me get over to CSEC. Let's see. I don't think this is going to work, but I'll try it. No, 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 no. Okay, let's see. Uh, whoops, women, committees. CSEC would be up here. So this is community comprehensive. Okay, this is it, CSEC. So this is their website. You see, it's it's organized. It has this thing on the left, you know, building energy audits, meeting support materials, uh, 
and so I think we could maybe have like main topics here, but we can see we can even have subtopics within within a main topic. So I Mark, Mark, yeah. I'm noticing that CSEC has their agendas and minutes. Um, I mean, who is supposed to be? Uh, we don't have them on our website. It's really hard to find them. Yes, we we have been posting them, um, but you're right. I think this is much better. So we that's a really good point. Uh, yeah, we should we should have a meeting support materials. Yes. Um, yeah. This, that would this, be super helpful. Because uh, I'll give you an example. This is and this actually is, relates to something what we're just talking about. You know, so here's a bunch of PDFs that support that particular meeting. You know. Uh, warrant position. Yeah, I mean, that's like, um, I mean, any planning board or zoning board or whatever, they always have PDFs available, but I've never even been able to find our stuff online. And I, and what's cool, I think, about this is that, for example, any of us could compose one of these, and as a committee, yeah. we could okay it and post it like we do our minutes in a PDF form, and then Give it to them, and they, you know, they tag it into the uh, to our website. I'm pretty sure it'd be very simple. Well, 2016 doesn't sound very current. I know that's that was what flabbergasted me to it that they've been. What well, was a good idea, but they aren't keeping up with it. We can needle them a little bit and find out or ask or inquire of them. And I haven't done that because I just, of course, just did this today. Uh, I mean, at a bare minimum, we ought to have something similar that says we meet on the first Monday of the month. Yes. Barring barring holidays, of course. Yes. But, like this. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I agree. I agree. This is. And if if the um if we submit minutes every month, then somebody ought to be putting them there. Otherwise, it goes into the ether because we can't we can't put anything on there. Yeah. So Our, I, when you click on most recent agendas and minutes, does you get 2016? Let's see. Uh, let me make this so it fits. It's uh, let's see. Well, okay. so I've got April 28th. Yeah, that's that's pretty recent. <clears throat> now this has just I think just the agenda, and then there's the minutes for the April 21st meeting. Yeah, that's how ours should be as well. Yeah, I agree. I like that. So I think I think what we since since the town said this is a like as a layout and, and we like it too. We can just say, okay, make us like that. Because <laughs> we've got agendas posted and we've got hi, whoever who's coming in. Let's see. Well, should I stop sharing? Is this good? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yep. Uh, let me just figure out that stop share. There we go. And then, hey, Steve. Mark and, hi, Steve. Hi. Um, I, mean, I made a little page about legislative stuff. Um, if we wanted to have a, you know, a thing tab on the left for that, yes. um, I can I can switch up how I did it for for our purposes. I just threw it in a, you know, threw the little table in as a picture. But I think I can actually make the titles of the bills hyperlinks nice that would be good um, and then so people can just click on them and go in that'd be peachy yeah that's a great idea i i did it by accident so i have to see if i can figure out how to uh, <laughs> do it on purpose yeah <laughs> so does the town have somebody who is sort of our um person in charge of information or constructing websites or anything yes they do yeah it, does that person have anything to say about, I, I would think that there would be some effort at this point to um, make some uniformities in, in the way things are displayed. Yes. And I'm wondering if we should, um, you know, make, make a list of suggestions, talk with that person, maybe sit down with them and tell them what we want or have some communication. Yeah, actually, that's yeah. that was the suggestion was to uh, from them was why don't we make our website like the CSEC site that we just looked at? Who's the they we're talking about? I think it's Aaron Stevens. Oh, maybe. okay. But Never I'm not, mind. Yeah, got I'm it. I'm not totally sure of that name. Yeah. Oops. Let's see. Um, well, she last I heard she was in charge of that, but 
there yeah. was so much change and um but i if you want our information i can check it out here well i've got i've got her contact info but i just haven't been in touch with her for a long time let's see yeah i mean for for my stuff with things that link out i'd you know i i would want guidance from her on how it should look yeah and how i should give it to her um i mean she can change it however she needs but yeah but i tried I, to keep the text to a minimum yeah what I have of her is Town of Concord Information Officer web page edits for uh, through her through the webmaster. So I, I'm pretty sure if we talk to her, she'll either do it, she'll either make sure it happens or knows knows who can make it happen. But I like I like I like the organization and I like I like the kind of flexibility that it looks like that layout has. You know where we can prepare PDFs and then and then link to them and to put in hyperlinks like you were saying. Uh, we could, for example, hyperlink to the stuff from uh, Jiguer for plants. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Okay. Well, that's so. Then the one thing we had on our to do list from last time was to to generate sort of web page content and share it amongst ourselves ahead of time to look at before a meeting, but which, which didn't really happen this month, but I think we could think about it before our meeting in July, you know, take this month. Oh, I'd like I'd like to actually sort of figure out an outline of what materials, because pollinator is a big topic, neonicotoids yeah. is a big topic. So one under that, what are the subsets that we want to put in there? Ah, good point, good point, okay. I mean, I would probably start on the smaller side, on the simpler side, and then we can add as we feel yep. more confident. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of key, um, key websites or publications, for instance, that describe the importance of native pollinators um, and the difference between like native pollinators, say, and honeybees, yep. right? Yep. Because um, we talk a lot about native pollinators, but most people wouldn't know what that is necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. I thought at one point we had. Maybe it's on our website. There's sort of the you know native pollinators are at risk. There was that. Right. That that's on the website. Yeah, but that's about all it says. We could certainly yeah. get some more background there. Yeah, if somebody could write a page or two, or not page, sorry, a paragraph or two. Yeah. Uh, and maybe link it to our mission. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I'm knowledgeable enough to uh, okay. write it off the top of my head. Okay. By the way, on I can the edit it for clarity, but. <laughs> on the mission, I I think it, it originally, the, the purpose of the committee was to um, talk about the dangers of neonicotinoids, but then I think it was broadened to be um, things that affect pollinators in general. Yeah. So I think I think there is room to expand the list of of things that bother pollinators. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think that's a good point. The uh, yeah, we the big change was for us to get involved with helping to develop healthy pollinator habitat. And right. Pollinator diversity. Gagir, um, in the last talk, I think it was his that I, I listened to. Yeah. Really nice um, slide that showed the various things. And I don't remember it real well, but it was, it was very well done. And I think it would be worth finding something like that or that one in particular. Mm -hmm. And then, um, reproducing it as a visual and it talks about neonics um i think climate change is one of them mm -hmm. um uh, non non-native plants that people buy crowding them out uh mm -hmm. what else uh well what i'll get to more to this later but deer are a big problem around here because they eat a lot of the the native pollinators and that's why we have to put fences around so many of these pollinator gardens. 
Mm -hmm. They're a great cause of ecological imbalance. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we wanted to get into lawns, but there was a fabulous um, web uh, talk uh, sponsored by Cary Library in Lexington on uh, that he spoke really articulately about why no turf. And then if you sort of the gradations going down of how to, how to make your lawn more um, world friendly, I guess, because you, if you want turf, but you're gonna, but you wanna reduce the watering and the, the fertilizer, you add this, you wanna do a little bit more, you do this, you're willing to go native, then these are the steps that you you know by degree how to get there. And I don't know whether we want to just um, you know put links to these different um, talks. I think that's very appropriate. I think rather than try to recreate all that, yeah. maybe a few a few sentences, sort of like Christine, like what you were saying, you know, a few sentences and then a hyperlink into uh, whereas people can go directly. And get the information without without us having to process it. Isabel, do you know um, if either the water department or the sustainability do they have any information on you know the lawns? Because it's certainly a big thing with the water department, right? They don't want us watering our lawns, right? Um, so there's I don't know. I um... yeah, just curious if you knew. I know over in West Concord it says one inch a week. Of water. Wow. Pretty liberal, yeah. But um, so just to circle back actually to what Isabel said earlier, um, I think it is a good idea to have an outline of items we want to include. I don't think we should go overboard, but I think it would be helpful to have a structure. Yes. Yeah, topics, um, you know, and then under yeah. topics, we can know what we're going to do. Because already we've talked about native pollinators, native bees versus honeybees. Yep. Um, support for pollinators, a healthy habitat, lawn. Um, so I'm just looking back at my notes from last time. Yeah. Um, so we talked about legislation and I already put something together on that, which I can alter however. Um, yeah. Mark, you had said maybe you would put together some info on pesticides with maybe with help from Steve. Yeah. Um, and then there, there, we wanted to add a section with links out onto resources, like a resource page, which uh, we talked about SVT, Lexington Living Landscapes, Good Years Plant List. Um, so a resource page would be good. Well, Good Gear doesn't go under pesticides. No, 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 sorry. I'm just sort of, I'm, I'm listing what we talked about last time. Oh, okay, because- yeah. um, These are all different items. Yeah. Oh, so, um, so the re a resource page is uh, the link for like SVT and Lexington and, yep. um, and uh, Lincoln uh, Landscape, Lincoln Trust. Yep. Yeah, these were different sections. So there's a pesticide <clears throat> okay. section, there's a resource section. Um, we were talking also about having an upcoming events box where we could yep. put list box of interest. Um, so, I mean, we had a lot of ideas last time. I think we just haven't Somebody washing their dishes. <laughs> um, the uh, National Resources Commission put together a pollinator pathway map. Oh. Um, I don't know if it's going to be on their website or on ours, but. Could be on both. Could be on both. Right. Oh, that's cool. I went to the um, the Lexington uh, native plant sale on Saturday and people were reflecting on how Concord has this big lawn at the high school with nothing there. <laughs> um, and I said, well, they're the students are putting in and, you know, they're doubling their their pollinators on Sunday, but it is a very small area. And I think one of the things I've noted 
um, and I don't know that this is under the privy of this committee, but other towns have taken a very um, visible space and put a pollinator garden in so that it's very you know, present, whether it's that, that island by the hospital that looks like trash, excuse me, but nobody's taking care of that or right in front of the BD Center in the lawn would be another high visibility. Yeah. But I'll talk to natural resources about that. Yeah. yeah there's a lot of acreage at the, at, at the high school site that is kind of depleted grass is the best thing I can call it. The, the, land, the land's pretty, pretty wan, but it would be fine for native pollinator plants. Mm -hmm. They don't particularly require super healthy soil they just they're yeah. yeah i don't want i don't want to get off topic so yeah i mean but if we're going to do pollinate so are you thinking that one of the topics would be healthy habitats yes that's a good idea yep Part of the high school property uh, that look may that looks like lawn may be the swale. Is that part of what you're thinking about? Or are you excluding uh, that? No, including that. Yeah, including that. That's actually that's got potential there. And actually, the high school students just like you say just doubled the size. Of that I went over and took a look at it this afternoon. And they I snuck in a willow into the swale. Ha <laughs> ha! Is that one of your willows? No, no, no. It was a. It was from the Lincoln, um, uh, oh. the Lincoln sale on Friday. Nice, nice. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah, I visited it this afternoon. I could show you a few pictures if you want, but maybe that's too off topic. Yeah, I think we're off topic. We should stay with this. I, I know this is um this is far down the road, but yep. I mean we do know that the um the what is it junction village junction park yes junction park the one that no the one carlene presented to right. for us that the new park uh, yeah yeah it's a, assisted living um well but there's home. the but there's all the green space around it and so you know they that committee plans to work with us so we can have a demonstration garden there i mean it'll be functional right but that's a couple of years down the line, and that that'll be relatively high visibility. Yes, you think? I mean, it's when you when I looked at it, it's pretty tucked away. And um, a friend of mine's putting in a pollinator um, uh, strip right at the end of on the bikeway at the end of um, Winthrop Street, right mm -hmm. right where you um, you sort of butt into that property. Well, remember that. Um, once the bridge across Route 2 opens, there's going to be a lot of bike traffic going mm -hmm. back and forth along there. Right now, it's a dead end, so that bridge is supposed to open soon. Anyway, but that, that's a location that we should keep in mind. Mm -hmm. But it would be, I agree that it would be cool to have something a little higher visibility, like in Concord Center or someplace. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and see, I mean, Delia would say that the Haywood Meadow is a pollinate, it's a pollinator garden. Uh, it just isn't a demonstration garden. Mm -hmm. And um, if you go over to Lincoln um, Station, you can see a demonstration uh, garden next to yeah. the twisted tree. Ah, uh, yeah. That's really thriving incredibly. But I, I was thinking about upcoming events because Steve talked about the Ag Day. And I was, um, you know, I think sometimes people, you know, start small and maybe we could um, do a whole education about planting milkweed in the fall because that's when you plant the seeds. And if we gave away free seeds for people to plant, I mean, that sort of, it, it's in a way it's cheesy, but in a way, it, you know, it, it is a way to sort of engage people to, to do more. Mm -hmm. um, I had a, a friend ask me who lives in West Concord, you know, where can she get <coughs> milkweed seeds? Where can she get milkweed? You know, so I'm going to give her a couple plants so, so it gets started. 
Um, I can't grow enough plants for the town at this point, and I don't know that anybody would provide um, milkweed plants in the fall, but it would be a good good time to mm -hmm. sort of get, get the word out. Yeah. They don't transplant very well because I transplanted some from my neighbor's garden and they immediately died um, yeah. in the to... spring. Yeah, yeah so. they're a rhizome. They're not, you know, the seed, the seed takes, takes time to create the rhizome. Yeah, I, I mean, I included the rhizomes, but they still die. But, but if you watch, you'll see that it comes up somewhere else. Oh, okay. I haven't noticed yeah. it yet. I, it did. The excitement's yet to come. <laughs> One thing I noticed, I was at the high school today. They they've planted a lot of Jaguar's list. Of course, they consulted with that list before they started. You know, so that was that was part of their plan, using the uh, materials from um, the Native Pollinator Task Force. And uh, but they're labeling the plants. They've got a, the plants labeled, but they're uh, I think. An improvement could be done there to make it a better demonstration garden. And I wondered if that's uh, perhaps a, what I'm thinking is maybe I would call Priscilla and offer uh, plant labeling. Is that something that would be of interest to our committee? Priscilla Guiney? Yeah. yeah. She, she bought the plants from Lincoln on Friday and for them to plant yet, yesterday. Yeah. Um, you know she's retiring. Okay. Well, the, but you know, nonetheless, it's the green team that's there that's doing it. So if someone yeah, she may retain her interest in, in her activity with the green team. Yeah. Do you, do you so, have a way to, to label? I've looked at a lot of different ways to label and um well, I, yeah. I, I'm gonna check with Chelmsford. I, I think that um oh what's her name? Yeah. Ooh. The anyway, sunny meadow person. The, the, what she's using are some metal labels actually that my wife used for an herb garden. They work pretty well if you have a, if you have an, uh, you know, if you write on them with something that the sun will not fade. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'll, I'll explore that. I, I guess I could check with, I can check with, oh, what is her name? We know who, we both know who we're talking about. Yeah. So I'll find out. I'll check with her to see how they've done. And I know Freddie's done a good job of it. So between, between those two, we can probably find a good label system. Uh, because it, they're, the plants are as illustrative. They've, oh, they've got a beautiful lupin that's in, view, in bloom right now. And last year, when I did the first half of it, I gave them a, a hyssop that, you know, dug up and planted, I think it was in July or something, you know, a tough time to do a transplant. And it looks great. It's it's about oh two and a half feet high and about a foot or two wide. And I gave her another hyssop to plant on Sunday, and she divided it. And both both chunks look fine. They'll they'll survive. The town's done a really nice job of pr providing them with compost. I've I've probably said all this all before. So they've got it. That garden is really up and running, and it is small, but it's it's. I think really quite good. Um, oh, well, both Lincoln and Lexington um, towns ordered um, uh, pollinator kits from Bagley Farms in Warren, New Hampshire. Yeah. And Lincoln, Lexing Lexington had a shade kit and a sun kit that people could purchase. Yeah. And that was three, that was three, three plants of forgotten how many varieties I think eight varieties yeah yeah it's it's the kits the kits are very valuable so i mean that those, are, those, are, those are substantial plants they weren't just plugs they were regular right. plants yeah but i mean that seems like a cool idea you <coughs> need to get money for it right and we're getting a well, little I off topic from from they, website but. right right Right. So, uh, but my so going back to my initial su suggestion is we have the ag fair coming up in September, and we yes. probably should decide if we're going to do be have a table and what would be helpful at the table. Oh, definitely. Any thoughts? Well, the the um, milkweed seed idea is good and easy. Yep. 
I, I do think we should have a table. Yes. Are we all agreeing on that? Steve, you want to say something on this? Yeah, no, the tables are available. <laughs> Look at what good kind of turnout. A lot of say? people are poking around. Yeah, we've done it before. Uh, our committee has. And it we is could probably have a lot of the same information we had. Yes. That we already prepared for the last meeting. Yeah. Stand, well, it, nice. it is an yeah. opportunity to talk about planting native plants that need stratification, which I could I could take on that. Yeah, that'd be great. And, and also the fall for a lot of perennials, the fall is a great time to put them in, you know. Uh, one, oh, uh, before we leave old business behind, um, I did check with Janet about, or Jane, about co-sponsoring the Jaguar talk. Mm -hmm. she, said she doesn't need any money from us, just if we said we were interested and would help them recruit people to attend it, which of course we would. I mean, what's there's no loss in that for us. That's, we're, we're excited about it. So, but we don't need to get money for it. Uh, so anyway, that I think the only other thing on old business that I just wanted to touch base briefly on would be the pollinator garden map. Now, apparently you said that NRC has done a map. Yes. Pathways. Yes. Maybe, maybe we check, maybe we look at the NRC's map and perhaps uh, adopt I that. I can circulate that. Okay. That would be terrific. Okay. So that I think, let's see. So that takes care of old business. Thanks, Isabel, for circulating that. Uh, I think an egg day table is a good one, and then we can continue to work these web pages. I think we've got we've listed. I, at least I took notes. We've got about eight different things we talked about versus things we might put on our web page. You know, just a beginning of an outline and a. Uh, and then, you know, fleshing out those different points. I think probably Christina, you've got the list all down. I'll, I'll write it all down. Yeah. Or what I, what I captured anyway. So if you, if, if you circulate that, maybe we could then get back and sign up for doing chunks of that. Yeah. Or, and then um, I'm also going to just refer to the previous minutes. Yeah. So that'd be great. Get those as well. Um, no need to repeat that. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Thank you. Um, anything else? You talking know. new business? Yeah. Janet had Janet had new business. Yep. Yeah, a couple of things. Um, well, first I'll start with the not maybe not quite so old or new, but I got another one of these mosquito Joe things today. Mm -hmm. yep. So I don't want to lose track of um, thinking about that and trying to figure out how to convey the information that it might not be the best thing to do. Yeah. Um, I think that, for, Janet, with that, do you think that could fit under the pesticide section of the website? And then we had, there was a, Mark, you had sent something around that we could link out to. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we ought to start by um, finding out what the different companies are that are active around here and what they're actually using. Yeah. Because um, my guess is it's probably permethrin most of the time, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a good point. So, um, so there's that. The other, the second. Will you thing take on calling them? Excuse me. Would you take on calling them to see what they're doing? Yeah, I could do that later in July. I can't do it right now, but um, but that that's going to be a real interesting thing because if you talk to the the people who are, hmm, if you talk to an applicator, they probably they may not know, or they may not want to talk about it. I mean, if I just call somebody up, I get somebody who answers the phone, or you get a, a recording. Yeah. Um, so and I I did some. I was looking around at Mosquito Joe about a year ago, and um, it's not easy. Maybe it's not easy talking to them. I think the best thing might be to research it online. Yeah. And, uh, find um, 
reviews or articles about them. But um, there's another company called Pure Solutions that I've seen. They always get these great names, you know. <laughs> yep. Um, <clears throat> and um, I, I mean, if I had a bunch of little kids, I can understand being, you, you know, very concerned that they would get bitten by mosquitoes and, you know, Triple E usually shows up by the end of the August yep. and ticks are, ticks are a problem in a way that they didn't used to be. So I can understand people's um, impulse to do this, but I think it, it would be good to learn more about it and try to offer some perhaps less impactful solutions. Yeah. Um, the second thing I wanted to mention is um, I talked to Stefan Bader today to ask him what the status of the Grantham project, you know, the um, assisted living, mm -hmm. low income assisted living um, thing behind project behind the prison that we're mm -hmm. supposed to put a pollinator garden in at eventually. Mm -hmm. And they are, they're short of funds. You know, there were supply chain issues, construction costs went up. Um, they had some tax incentive issues, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, when they scrape the money together, then they can close the deal and start actually breaking ground. But that at this point looks like it'll be next December. And presumably that could slip as well. So we're not going to be in the business of doing any more uh, consulting on pollinator gardens, I would imagine, until January or so just you know in case you wanted to know where that was um and then the third thing i wanted to mention is i've been working with three other people um to think about the impact of deer on the ecology our main interest is the um knocking down the deer population because they are causing such ecological imbalance mm -hmm. so much damage and we can see that here with our, um, with pollinators. Um, uh, there's a study that Talamy uh, cites that took place in Western Pennsylvania where they put in deer exclosures. And when the deer were not able to get into parts of the forest, the trillium came back and it outcompeted the garlic mustard. And I thought that was interesting because I've spent a lot of time working on garlic mustard and the idea that the deer who are also a problem I've worked on, that they could be working uh, together, I, I thought was absolutely fascinating. It is interesting. Yeah, I can, I can send that study to you yeah, if you want. I'd be very interested in that. Okay, yes. So I'll send the study. Um, it's deer. Trillium. Oh my gosh. And garlic mustard. Okay. So another th thing that people have started talking about around here is that the deer eat the um, lady slippers and you don't see them as much. Oh, wow. So I, I think the deer pressure is getting great enough around here that it's beginning to be obvious <laughs> to more, more people. Um, it's, they're about 30 per square mile right now. Oh, wow. So, this, this group I'm working with is looking at uh, what other towns are doing in the way of deer management programs. Okay. And, and what works, what doesn't work. We would probably need about two years of education in the town before we could even implement a program. I, my task that I volunteered to work on was to look for outcome measures because you can say that you'd like to you'd like to decrease the deer population but how do you know if you did how do you know how far you need to go mm -hmm. so there are in all the measures are imprecise you're not going to take a census of deer mm -hmm. um i've been looking at tick animal and human uh tick-borne diseases specifically lyme anaplasmosis and babesiosis and I've been looking at car, deer car accidents. I asked um, uh, Steve Verrill if there was any information on 
crop damage other than anecdotal, if anybody's been keeping records on that. Um, and then the, the last area is the forest. And I, there's a measure called the 10 foot sapling, which has been used in some places. Hmm. And I bet if I walked down into the forest in front of my house, I bet I wouldn't find much in the way of 10 foot saplings, but those, because they get eaten by the deer. Hmm. Anyway, um, potentially that committee uh, would might find areas to work with the Pollinator Health Advisory Committee. Mm -hmm. I think there's some overlap in their interests. So I just thought you ought to know about them. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I just got off of the web the uh, webinar on uh, Brewster's Woods and um, Audubon said that they are gonna have deer um, bow and arrow hunting um, at Brewster's Woods. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, yeah. that's good. I just was looking at Sudbury Valley trustees and they have some stuff on deer management. And it is a regional problem. Uh, Kristen O'Brien at Sudbury Valley trustees is um, very interested in partnering with citizen groups who would be interested in um, managing the deer population. I had a conversation with her last fall and she said uh, SVT couldn't um, they couldn't initiate it and lead it. And I'm not sure if that's because they don't have the staff, the money, you know, the resources to do it. Um, or if it, if it was more, you know, not exactly their mission, so they wouldn't want to lead it. But she was extremely interested in partnering with other groups. So if Concord does that, um, I think she would, uh, well, we'd, we'd pull her in for a conversation about it way before we actually implemented any, anything. What we really need to do is have about two years of talk that, that normalizes the idea that deer are an herbivore that will expand its population as long as its food supply lasts mm -hmm. and that it's, it has no predators and it's not particularly comfortable for them when they get to, to, to the edges of their food Pop, uh, the carrying capacity of their food supply, because then they become they become smaller, degraded, sick, and so on. So um, anyway, mm -hmm. I will send you the report. If you have any more questions or anything, let me know. That sounds good. Okay. So Steve, if you if there's somebody in charge of running the um, ag fair. You can put you can put my name in the in the pot for or you know heading a oh, table. Huh? Okay. Okay. Yeah. What's the yeah. date of the ag fair? Uh, it's the second Saturday in uh, September. <clears throat> okay, that's the tenth. That sounds right. Oh. <clears throat> Good. Oh, it's the harvest moon. The moon is full that day at 5.59 a.m. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Right after sundown. Yeah. Well, 5.59 a.m. actually. Oh. We'll have to get up. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Good. I'll be here for July, but not August. Okay. I'll be here July and August, but not September. Okay. Do you want to take a month off? Do I? Yeah, just kidding. <laughs> Since we're all taking a month off, most oh, of a month. Just no. a joke. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a busy summer. This is good. Well, I think, um, are there any other new business? This is, we've got a pretty pretty full plate of things to do. <laughs> this is a big open-ended topic. Uh, I'm wondering how we can expand our numbers um, and have friends of uh, pollinators be more involved. Um, 
I mean, it, this is a very small, to me, this is a small number to get a lot done. I think that's a great idea because like in the case of um, honeybees, I've got a list of people interested in honeybees that's, oh, I don't know, 60 or so people. And, uh, and a number of them would be willing to pitch in on different things. And uh, even though we're, we're pro native bees, Right. Yeah, I, I think a, a lot of I, I know a lot of a lot of honeybee people are also interested in native, native bees. I mean, I okay. don't see it as an exclusive thing. Uh, I think that the uh, there's a lot of interest in it. I mean, there was a tremendous amount of support uh, at the town meeting for that article we put on a year, a little over a year ago. Um, gosh, you know, there's a lot of people you know, stood up and said they were supportive of the idea. A Which of, idea was that? Well, it was the it was the proposal that leases of town land and new leases of town land should be neonic free. Oh, okay. I forget what article number it was, but it but it it got a lot of support. Right. Uh, and you know, and you see a lot of people talking about pollinator plants. I think I think we've got an education job, but I think there are a lot of people willing to pitch in and work with us on that. And I think we, I think we can also improve our efforts by, you know, linking in. We've already talked about this on our website. We can link in, you know, the Native Pollinator Task Force, that group, and you know, that Sudbury Valley Trustees is doing, the Massachusetts Pollinator Network, uh, another good group. Um, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And and for that matter, when at just at a simple site like Harrington Park, uh, where where, yeah, I got stuck with that one. Boy, what a mess. I'm really working hard on that. Are you? Well, well you it's know, all grass and crab grass. Let me tell you. Well, just before COVID hit, we got a we we submitted our committee submitted a proposal to uh, to the Concord Garden Club and they gave us two hundred and fifty dollars for plant materials. Well, I could use plant. I got plant material. I need I need physical help in planting the plant material. And watering it, there's no source of water. Well, Ricky's right there, right? Yeah, but Ricky, the, Ricky's, it's his farm. He's not gonna do the town. No, I know that, I know that. But but I think the trick there, I know that site pretty well. Um, Good, come out, let's go, let's go look at it together. That would be great. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> okay. So anyway, let's, let's do that, because there's a lot to be done there. Uh, in a lot yes. of possibility. Uh, and I think uh, back when, uh, well, anyway, we, don't, we can take that offline because, uh, good. So we'll put that under new business, Harrington Park renovation. Let's see. For Harrington Park continued work. Cause I think they've been working there. No, it's me alone. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yes, it's me alone. Okay. Well then we'll have to get on with that, Isabel. Okay. Cool. Lo Lois, were you going to say something? Oh. But I, I agree. I don't think our, I think it's, it'd be fun for our committee. I mean, I, I like digging up plants and giving them to Priscilla to plant at the high school or whatever, you know, or giving them to you guys, along with all the Asian worms that are in them. But uh, the, um, I think, I think our big job is education and just making people aware. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, that we should really try to maximize the use of the website there. Yes, and, I feel so too. Um, I mean, especially with really simple, clear messages. And I think I mentioned this last time, but, you know, right up front, you know, we have that graphic pollinators need our help, right? But let's, let's have some like three or four very clear bullets on what what steps can people do, right? I mean, you can yeah. reduce re reduce or limit the use of pesticides in your garden. Plant native plants. Um, take away your lawn. I mean, there are things that can be done, right? So yeah. if we can distill down a message, then it, that that gets people interested and excited, right? Something they don't not everybody wants to be overwhelmed with science. I mean, right. I like it, but I'm a scientist. So mm -hmm. uh, we need to 
sort of keep some simple, simple messages. Yeah, yeah I agree. Places, places where people can dig deep as well, but. Yep. I agree. If you give people a very small number of fairly easy and straightforward things to do, and then some links to find more complicated stuff, I think you're going to have more success getting them to at least adhere to the very simple things. Um, you will be happy to know that one of the gardens on the garden tour that, you know, the Concord Museum has a garden tour every year. Okay. This year it was in person again. Last two years it was virtual. But the garden tour had a garden that was, um, the owner says he's doing it, um, uh, taking tips from Doug Tallamy or using that philosophy. Was that Dave Witherby? Uh, yeah, you're not supposed to know that, but yeah, he said hello to me. So yeah, I know. <laughs> he, he, lives, he, about lives it. Down, he lives down the street from me. Yeah, I, he was talking. Yes. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're right there. You yeah. know, so I thought that was a very good thing. And I would think that one thing we could do as a committee, official committee of the town and all, is write an official letter and congratulate them or applaud them or, you know, give them a pat on the back for doing this and tell them that we would love to have one next year as well. So, um, and I could talk to, I know one of the people on the selection committee, cause I went to high school with her, believe it or not. Oh, nice. um, yeah. We discovered each other in the, the so, uh, lettuce section of Donnellan's several years ago. <laughs> but, um, and then, um, so, so just getting people to hear about these things um, is useful. If we could, you know, the, over at the library, they have these great big planters and they're right. I think they're movable. They may have wheels on them or something, but they, they have them out in the summer, maybe all the time, but um, they have something planted in them, usually tomatoes or something, but we might be able to use that idea. One of those planters as, as you know, with some native plantings, or, you know, in a little sign that we could stick in the garden that says, Doug Tallamy said, do it this way, or, you know, but, and then I guess, and, and refer to the book. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's an idea. Mm -hmm. um, another thing for not next year, this won't work this year. Um, the the bookstore, bookstore likes to have um, people in the community do their front window. So oh, if, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's collect books. Let, why don't we just have it? It was one of those back burner things. Yep. And we collect lists of books like Calamy's book and whatever else we can come up with. And then um, and then we you have to do this months and months ahead of time. But we could mm -hmm. say to the um, bookshop that, you know, we could tell them now that we are working on this and we'd like to to do this. Um, and what does it take? When could we be on the schedule? And it'd be really nice to be on like about this time next year or a month earlier, or I don't know, whenever you, whenever you think it'll work. And then lastly, um, now this goes, this is slightly off, but the, the idea is the same or the approach is the same. In this deer committee I'm working with, we thought, although you cannot use a deer that hunters shoot around here uh, on, in restaurants, if you get people used to the idea that you could eat venison, then they would be more likely to accept the concept. So um, um, well, I guess that's not going to be as anyway, if you if you're trying to if you're trying to get people to to accept an idea instead of hitting it straight on, it might be better to sort of sort of work around it mm -hmm. and get them used to some other concepts that are related, like um, like the deer are eating all of the native flowers, yeah. and therefore those flowers don't have the insects on them that they used to have, and therefore birds are gone. Right. So then you can rope in the bird the bird watching people. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, how many times you, you heard Peter Alden say, you know, we don't have these birds around anymore or Joan Walsh's breeding bird survey. A lot of them are gone and a lot of it's climate change, but not completely. 
So anyway, there are ways to, to approach, um, to, to get people to accept things if you don't approach it very confrontationally. So. Yeah. So getting back to the website and simple messages, I'll, I can take on like putting, starting a list of three yes. or four things and then I'll send it around and people can offer wordsmithing or alternatives that sounds, or. That sounds good. And, and I think, well, you know, like Janet, you were just saying a list of books. That's something we could put up on the website. You know, here's some useful titles to read if you're interested in more on, on this topic. I think, uh, okay, well, we've- So, um, Christina, can you send that in Word? Because um, I get lost with the uh, Google Drive um, uh, material, so that would be good. I think I always send them in Word. Okay, just I'm just clarifying because I get that people switch and then I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I usually just send it in Word, it's easier. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate yep. that too. Yep. Yeah. Um, just remember, we can't discuss back and forth right. via email, but you can. People can send me feedback, and then we can discuss at the next meeting. Yeah, I, I think that sounds good. Remember, no. Otherwise, it's in violation of open meeting law. Yeah, and I and I think if we want to, uh, how do people feel about? You know, here I proposed it last time, and I didn't do it. But I, I still feel maybe putting together a sample web page for our web, uh, you know, uh, uh, but, you know, say, um, for example, you've been working on, Christina, you've been working on the uh, legislation list, you know, with the, with the links in it. Maybe send, I don't think there's any problem with the open meeting law if we broadcast that to our group. No, no, no. I, we can send it out. We just can't. Can't discuss it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So I no think problem I, with there's no problem with sending and sharing information. Yeah. The issue is purely with discussing via email. Yeah. yeah. So I do think that you know because we meet monthly and we have great ideas when we talk, <laughs> but then we go off to our lives. Yes. If there is a, a sort of somebody says halfway, you know, due in two weeks ah. is this, and here is the the minutes from last week, you know, last one. And you're responsible and just have it start, you know, in terms of Isabel, you're supposed to do this, Mark, you're supposed to do this. I hate to be sort of kindergarten, but I think we need that. I think that's good. I, I spend my work life hurting cats. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm doing a meow now, I can tell you. <laughs> um, so when I send out the minutes, whenever that is, I'll try to get them out next weekend. I usually do try to have action items at the end. Yes, um, yeah, but I think, but I think I can, even more I'll pointedly, to, like, you know, do your homework, I'll, Isabel. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to um, remind myself to uh, send out an email like a, a week later too. Okay. We can, we can, as a, as a, you two as the uh, straw bosses of the group, you know, and just keep us going. So as a, as a, an ending note, I have a lot, a lot of seedlings of the um, native plants that are good for the um, uh, bee, bumblebees that are at risk um, and they need homes. So if anybody wants anything, come by and I will share. Okay. Um, I I would love to take stuff, but my garden is almost 95% shady. So I have trouble with most plants. Well, um, there's, oh, yeah. I, I don't have a lot of shade ones, I don't think at this point, um, but they're, but I, um, I'll, I'll think on that. If anybody has creeping phlox, I think that's one thing where it can tolerate some shade and I have a place I want to put it. Okay. But so there was on the in the shade in the shade um, kit. Look at Bagley Farms um, kits, and you'll see what they have for shade. And then you can, you know, buy that elsewhere. You because you don't have to get it from Bagley, but um, their plants really did look wonderful. Good. Thanks. I, I spend hours like looking at the plant lists, trying to find the ones. No, no. Just just go to Bagley, <laughs> and and it'll say shade the shade yeah. kit. Somebody needs to make a searchable. Well, that's very searchable, let me tell you. Yeah. And 
I um, I was part of unloading to both Lexington and Lincoln's and um, all of the plants, well, not all, but most of the plants really looked mature and healthy. Good. Also planted a, a good number of them. Jaguar's list is pretty searchable. Jaguar's list, I think it's in the form of a spreadsheet. So it's very searchable with. Yeah, I have trouble. I mean, it's not super easy to find. Okay. But the, but, the bird, I lost the, when my computer um, crashed, I lost the, the um, non PDF version, the one that you could manipulate. Oh. So if you have the version you can manipulate, that would be great. I'll send it out to everybody. How's that? Okay. Yeah. Because I only have the PDF. Okay. So, um, so what do you, what do I look for on Bagley Pond? Is it, Pollinator kit? Yeah, you'll go to what, what they have for sale and then they'll show you the kits. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, let's see. She cares. Let's and if you, if people do want plants, just, um, I'm at 121 Everett. Um, my phone number is 978-549-2491. Okay. I'm sorry, what were the first three digits? 978 549. Okay. You have me in your Rolodex. Yeah, I do, I do. Um, <laughs> Isabel, I need some plants for this pollinator garden, but I can't protect them from the deer. You, I, you know, I mean, give them a chance. You can also just put up a mini fence that just hinders them a little bit. Well, I can put up. Come see my two fences to keep my bunnies from eating it. The bunny had a wonderful breakfast of um, Golden Alexander one morning. It was delicious. I think we have we have a regular fox um, around here. It makes rounds a.m. and p.m. We call it fox o'clock when it shows up. Uh, and it, we watched it eat squirrels and chipmunks. So I don't think there are too many bunnies around here. I never see bunnies. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, deer are the only problem because wow. they don't have any predators. Yeah. All right. Um, Anything sorry, from the from I, Lois? I, I need. I need to head out soon. Yeah, I um, think. I think we do. Lois, you have any comments? No, not really. Okay. Um. Yeah. Well, I do have. Like, when you're talking about pollinated pathways or whatever. Um. Housing Authority is just started a garden group. Most people aren't into native plants at all, but I think there's possibilities. I mean, I am, but in my mistakes too. But um, Stefan Bader was very encouraging. He's on the board for the housing. Yes. Authority, and he was incredibly encouraging to us. In fact, he, he helped to get the garden policy, which they just passed this past week, um, modified. Um, Stephanie, the Chobrek, the um, chair, modified it into a positive thing because it was all about what we couldn't do at at, at Everett Gardens and um, Peter Bulkley. So um, there's a little more positiveness to it, but. Um, I just have this dream that, you know, like that whole front lawn, you talk about a place with a big lawn. That would be a perfect spot. That's the front that of the yeah, Peter perfect. Barker building, which is across from the Hunt Gym, where they have the kids camp all summer and also after school, before and after school programs, which, yeah. you know, bring some shovels. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I mean, I have like this kind of creative mind sometimes about things like that. And how to get people plus the um the green team kids from the high school um there's a, actually it wasn't the green team it was the seniors were supposed to come a week ago saturday and they didn't because they had a covid scare and people with too much covid so they didn't come but they were scheduled to come and work with the maintenance people on just regular gardening and you know, maybe between green team seniors 
somehow to, to get <coughs> something rolling in that respect. Yeah. Well, I spoke with um, Jim. I, yeah, I, mean, I spoke with Stefan directly about the fact that you were struggling with the with the committee, um, <laughs> with the the housing people. I, I sort of cornered him at at a, an event and said, you yeah. know, you're on the board, so this is what I want you to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, he came to talk about um, town before town meeting to talk about town meeting and how it worked and some things with nature of that mm -hmm. and. This was a whole group that garden people cornered him then too. Good. So that I mean he's really listening. And he when we showed up, um, a couple of us showed up at um the sustainable Concord event. He was there like making sure we took trees, but there's no place to plant them here. I had to give mine <laughs> away to, to somebody who had a place to plant them. That's Good. the whole thing. And the, the background of the housing authority is the Department of what is it? Um, DH, the Housing and Community Development are the people who give the housing people money and, and most of the projects go through them at a, at least a, sometimes 40-50% overhead um, on the projects. Uh, most of them have no outside landscaping or gardening or any kind of focus at all and in fact even their big projects it's minimal. So that's the decision-making entity is DHCD um, and that's okay the reason that the housing authority director wanted to put a garden policy in was so that it could be a stop point if DHCD wanted and they've done this other places it's just had them plow under their gardens no matter what you know some of like little food gardens or you know a kitchen um, herb mm -hmm. garden kind of thing so that's kind of the loop that's not quite related, but kind of related because without the pollinators, we're nowhere. Great point, great point. I look forward to giving you some seedlings. Okay. Okay. Thank Good you. Job. Okay. And well, I move you. we adjourn. Yep. I second it. Okay. Second it. Third it. Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Steve, Thank you talk too much. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody knows the pollen around? Yes. Oh my goodness, yes. pollen storms. Oh. Yeah. That was pretty well, wild. These aren't nice. collecting enough. <laughs> my green car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark, for doing the work and um, to try to get me approved well, in all the pieces. Thank you for wanting to be in our group. My gosh, this is going to be great. We'll be fully. Well, like I said, I've got some crazy ideas sometimes. I mean, basically, I'd love to see a pollinator path from the townhouse across to the, um, what do you call it, the, the, the place, the, the Monument Square, yeah. first right tavern, first parish, back through over the mill dam, yeah. Rikon, then the scout house, and then my come. property, then yeah. where I live, across the street to the hunt gym, yeah. armory. You know, Alcott, that's another, that's Alcott School, yeah, and then the, all the the meadow behind the Alcott School is. I think there's some milkweed down there. Then there's down lots of, in in that meadow. There's yeah. a whole lot. That's yeah, cool. then the, the high school down to the high school. That's for openers. It, yeah, and you know, benches yeah. and benches along the way. That's the other part of it, so people can kind of wander, um, yeah. and have a seat and sort of soak in the the atmosphere it could be it could be something you know like the remember the freedom trail they put in boston oh yeah that, that uh you could go along maybe i know jiguer says you know plant a square meter of something like say hyssop or uh or willow well, willows yeah. willow's always going to be more than a square meter yeah. but uh but you know i could see along that pathway maybe you don't have a big garden but maybe somebody has monarda planted and maybe somebody has you know hyssop planted or maybe so that it and maybe a shade plant in a shady area but along that path you're just describing that would be a lot of fun you know we yeah. can do it in various places like isabel where you've got that garden along the uh yeah we can river. visit yours too isabel on the way and then like you know like you look at emerson field okay the fields themselves are going to be fields but there's edges 
Yeah. Around the, all the fields there, there's edges. Yeah, yeah no, that, 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 the edges don't work because I, I look at it all the time. And How come that, the edges don't work? Because I'm curious. Because, the, I mean, the dogs are in that area all the time. Um, against the fence? Yes, against the fence. Okay. Well, I mean, well, personally, I mean, people advertise the place as a dog park, which is disgusting as far as I'm concerned. Well, I, I won't go over there most of the time. I mean, now they've repat put a path and stuff, but every time I would go over there, I'd come home with dog poop all over my feet. I, I, don't, I don't have that problem, but it's just all the, it's just busy, very, very busy. Okay. okay. And then um, jump up here. We should go, right, yeah. Yep, I gotta Thanks. run. Bye. All right, night, night.